Hello everyone, my name is Dylan and welcome to another video. If you are new to my channel, hi there. I teach modern RP British English in a fun and entertaining way. Hopefully. Today I'm going to be sharing five British English expressions that only native speakers know about. So if you do know these, then congratulations, you must be fluent. And if you don't know these, well, you're about to. As always, everything that we cover in today's lesson will be included in a free PDF. You don't need to sign up to anything, just hit the link in the top comment and press download. Right guys, enjoy the video. Expression number one, the land of Nod. The land of Nod. So if you are in the land of Nod, what might you be doing? Is it A, you are talking to someone? Is it B, you are sleeping? Or is it C, you are eating something? Okay, you ready? Cool. Well, if you said A, then you are absolutely wrong because the answer is B. If you are in the land of Nod, it means that you are sleeping. So I'm not too sure exactly where this expression has come from. However, it is definitely linked to a very common phrasal verb that we have. That phrasal verb is nodding off. I reckon you you might have heard of this one. So if you have nodded off or if you are nodding off, it means that you are falling asleep. Normally unintentionally without you actually meaning to, perhaps you are just very tired. So therefore, if you have nodded off, it means you are in the land of nod and you must be sleeping. This expression is very old. However, it is still fairly commonly used. You know, people will know what you're talking about if you say this. So the next time you feel like going for a nap, why not say, right, I'm off to the land of nod. And if you do do that, then congratulations, because you will be the first non-British person in the history of the world that has ever used that sentence. Expression number two, bugger all. Bugger all. This is a proper piece of British slang right here. So if you have bugger all, what do you have? Is it A, you have everything? Is it B, you have nothing? Or is it C, you have something that is very valuable? You ready? Cool. Well, if you said A, then congratulations, because you are nearly right. The answer is B. So bugger all is a piece of very British slang, meaning absolutely nothing. This can be used in many different ways. So let me just give you some examples. Yeah, she complained about the food, but you know, she did bugger all to help prepare it. This means she complained about the food, but she didn't do anything at all to help make it. Yeah, mate, I'm looking through the manual now, but there is bugger all information about how to actually fix the problem. This just means that I'm looking through the manual, but there is no information whatsoever about how to solve the problem. You know, I have worked here for years and I have received bugger all recognition. This just means that I have worked here for a long time and I have received no recognition whatsoever. So this expression can be used in many different ways. I'll put some more examples in the PDF, but all you need to know is that bugger all means absolutely nothing. Right, I must warn you though, this word bugger is like a very old swear word. So it's not really considered rude these days. I think my grandmother told me off once for using it, like that's how old it is. It's definitely not like a proper swear word. I don't think anyone would be particularly offended by this unless they're over the age of 100. So just bear that in mind though, and I would probably just save this for casual situations only. Once again, this is a very old expression, but it is still used in the UK. Number three, and this is probably the easiest one, so you might already know this. Let's find out. The expression is two peas in a pod. Two peas in a pod. 
So if you describe two people as being like two peas in a pod, what does this mean? Is it A, they are introverted, so they don't really like going outside or meeting new people? Is it B, they are always eating food together? Or is it C, they are very similar? You ready? Okay, cool. Well, if you answered with C, then congratulations, because you are absolutely right. So this expression is still very commonly used, not only in the UK, but I believe in America as well. And if two people are like two peas in a pod, it just means that they are very similar in some way. So in this instance, the pod refers to the little sleeping bag thing that peas grow inside. And if you are like one of the peas and your friend is the other pea and it's just you two in that pod, you are likely to have a lot of similarities. Expression number four. Excuse my French. Excuse my French. So why might a British person say this? Is it A, because we have just sworn? Is it B, because we are drunk? Or is it C, because French is not taught in our schools? You ready? Okay. Well, if you have answered with B, then congratulations, because once again, you are nearly correct. The correct answer is A. So British people say, excuse my French, before or after we have just sworn. And why do we do this? That's a very good question. It's kind of like a joke. So when we say, excuse my French, after swearing, we are kind of pretending that the word we have just said, the swear word, isn't actually a swear word. It's just some random French word. I guess the joke is that obviously we both know that that's not the case and it is a swear word, but we say it anyway. It's kind of a way to acknowledge the fact that you have just sworn without having to actually, you know, apologize for it. It's kind of a humorous take on it. Another element is that the French language is seen as quite a sophisticated and elegant language. And therefore, when we pass our dirty British swear words off as French, I guess that adds a humorous touch as well. So as mentioned, it's basically just a humorous way of us acknowledging that we have just sworn or that we are about to swear without having to apologize for it. You know, it's all very lighthearted. By the way, some people do also prefer to say pardon my French. They both mean the exact same thing. So you can choose whichever one you would prefer to say. And this expression is still pretty commonly used in the UK as well. Number five, and I've actually saved the hardest for last. So the expression is, I'm not as green as I'm cabbage looking. I'm not as green as I'm cabbage looking. So we have another vegetable themed one here. What does this mean? If you are not as green as your cabbage looking, then what are you actually saying? Is it A, I'm not as hungry as I look? Is it B, I'm not as sick? you know, as ill as I look? Or is it C, I'm not as stupid as I look? I'll give you a bit of time here. All right, time's up. So if you said C, then congratulations, because you are absolutely right. You are clearly not as green as your cabbage looking. This is a slightly weird one, but it is funny. So if you are not as green as your cabbage looking, it means that you are not as stupid or naive as you look. Let me try and explain this one. So firstly, a cabbage is a big green vegetable. Secondly, if you describe someone as green, it normally means that they are envious. You might have heard the expression green with envy. However, as is the case here, it can also mean that they are naive or stupid. So if someone doesn't have a lot of life experience, you might describe them as green. So therefore, if you are not as green as your cabbage looking, it means that you are not as naive or green as a cabbage is. So this is quite an old one. It's not that commonly used anymore, but it is a funny one for you to know. Right, guys, and there we have it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. 
As mentioned, everything that we covered will be included in a free PDF. You don't have to sign up to anything or enter your email. Just hit the link and press download. The link is in the top comment. All I ask in return is that if you did enjoy today's video, why not consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, maybe even commenting down below. I know those all sound like very small things, but honestly, they make such a big difference. Right guys, thank you again for watching and until next time, cheers.